Okay, hi everybody. I think we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, I think some folks will still continue to come in uh, today, but um, I've started the recording so that everybody knows this uh, session is being recorded. Um, and um, welcome to this side of totality. I hope you were all able to enjoy uh, watching the eclipse. And um, let me um, share my screen. Is that coming up properly, um, Melissa? Yep, yep. Okay, so at this time, um, uh, welcome everybody to this session of um, the Ask Me uh, Provider Network, and I'll turn over the mic to uh, Melissa Barron. Okay, so today's um, session is going to be about asthma self-management um, and triggers. So it's kind of where this next um, phase is going to go through. Um, and then the next slide is uh, our disclosures, and we don't have any disclosures to talk about. We are not getting paid by anybody. Um, that's just that. Um, so our objectives today uh, is that we're going to kind of still build on the ASME um, program and what the next, um, the third session would look like, uh, which is going to um, be triggers, we're going to help you focus on supporting uh, the students with asthma. Uh, and then we're going to help identify children with suboptimal asthma control and how to apply the session content um, with the children and families and show you the tools, how to monitor it and kind of encourage the process of starting to get this process going. We are incorporating the 2020 um, asthma guidelines. Then we're going to discuss um, the Envision walkthrough, which is a program through the Department of Health. That's really great um, program for you to partake in of your schools. Uh, low hanging fruit for you guys as nurses. It's like they come through and talk about more about that. Uh, and then how to nominate your school to become an asthma friendly school, get recognition and get money. It's really great for that one. You get to go to the, um, maybe they'll bring it back, but you used to be able to go to Montpelier and, you know, kind of be awarded that, which is kind of a really kind of fun thing to be a part of. And then um, kind of dis case discussions and questions, which are always my favorite, the case discussions. Um, OK, and, and, Mel one. and Melissa, Melissa, yep. I just wanted to share that um, we, we don't go to Montpelier any longer, oh. but we do and we don't do the cash award because it became quite tricky for schools to incorporate those. But oh. we do mm -hmm. do this recognition program, which um, allows them to get media coverage and also are um, posted on the website with in a, into a map and also into the highlights of who's won recognition. So it's great for the schools to promote um, to pa parents and families and their communities of um, achieving those. But I just wanted to clarify that. Oh, yeah, sorry, I was wrong. But yeah, no, that's still okay. really cool. Still get a badge of honor, <laughs> yeah. maybe a pin. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so this is the kind of the uh, four part series that we talked about uh, over every week. We kind of say that, but this is number three of the four part series that you would do with your children, with your kids. Um, and today we're talking about asthma triggers and tools for trigger reduction. Um, as you know, um, triggers are a real big part of that and for kids and homes and all kinds of uh, reasons. Um, so things to help with that, well, again, is the vision walkthrough. Um, we have videos and um, to, uh, to supplement your teaching when you do do the for them. And then there's a part of the form that you would fill out that we, Karen, have, I think reviewed last week maybe about the form and um, just trying to help you identify one student um, to at least start this process with to see the change that would, um, that would occur. Um, so that's what we'll kind of go over today. This is kind of the third part of the four parts uh, education series that um, you guys will be teaching them. And so the next one is um, we're going to talk about the asthma triggers tools for trigger reduction, how to help families, how to support them and help uh, educate them. And then the next slide, some fun facts. Uh, fun facts, asthma is very pro prevalent in Vermont. 51% um, of children have had an exacerbation in the past year, which is quite high, hence why we partner with the Department of Health to try to help reduce that um, in any way we can. Um, and then 38% of children with asthma have had one or more exacerbation in the past three months, and that's quite high, which means missing school days, parents miss work, and it's like a whole cycle. 
So 56% of the duration of the most recent exacerbation lasted for days, hours, or weeks. So for more than children with asthma. So that's also a big deal. As you know, you see the kids missing school or coming back too soon or coughing. So try to just help tease that out and help support the families and prevent or um, with anything we can do to help decrease the amount of flares and missing of school days. Um, this is another fun slide of Vermont triggers. Um, what are the biggest um, culprits in the state? Um, indoor pets, everyone loves their pets and everyone loves them, but how to help reduce that, identify if it is the pet and how to, how to come up with some um, areas to, to cope with that. Pets in the bedroom is another good one and carpets in the bedroom. Top big, no surprises there. And cooking with gas in a poorly ventilated home. Um, is also way up there in whistles and fireplaces, which as we all know, that's how a lot of Vermonters heat. So just trying to help them maybe with making it um, ventilation again, it's kind of key to help supporting them because it is hard to obviously make them change to their way they heat their home, but how to support them and make that a little bit more cleaner environment. 84% um, of children are exposed to two or more triggers in the home, and that's a big deal. So if we can help even reduce one to help them, at least so they don't flare so quickly or, or so long, uh, it's a really big deal. So, or even um, four or more have, 43% have more are exposed to triggers. And that's just like a, a real big deal. And if we can even decrease some, it's amazing. I know we have sometimes with parents finally quit smoking. It's like a game changer when they come back and see us. Um, the providers are able to decrease the amount of uh, inhaled uh, steroids that they can be on, and it's just a real game changer. So um, try to help families understand that and the importance of that is uh, it's the kids can be on way less medicines, and it's only helpful for everybody. So um, that's kind of the uh, stats that I know aren't surprising, but it's just nice to see and kind of reaffirm that what you know is true. Um, Okay, next slide. Um, this is kind of just reviewing this in a different way. Um, you know, most of Vermonters with asthma and 84% of our children have all the exposure to all those triggers. So again, those triggers are causing them to flare, which are causing the exacerbations, which you're seeing them in school. Um, top, you know, top again, um, environmental triggers are indoor pets, letting them sleep on their head and all that. And then all this they're hugging their stuffed animal with the cat next to them. It's all all no go, right? And how to support them and um, trying to make small changes slowly to not have a little all that stuff in the room. And uh, again, ventilation is probably the best way because uh, it's really expensive. I know to switch. Obviously, we all know tobacco smoke of any hand, any kind is bad, 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 and it's just not good. So we all know the stats on that one and how to just support them and just reaffirming and reminding that vaping is also a trigger and it is, even though it's not smoking, it's still bad and it's still bad to do, bad for them to be around. So just kind of bring that up to the kids because they often can nag their parents pretty good if they um, are educated in that way to help kind of give them the tools to ask their parents to stop or at least go outside or wear a coat when they go outside. Any of those things I would be really supportive for them. So in talking about all the triggers, what are we going to do about it? How do we um, work with their asthma management? How do we kind of help mitigate some of the um, things that are going on? So some, thankfully in Vermont, our cockroaches aren't as big of a deal, but it is cockroaches are one of the um, allergens. Mice, pests, any of that, of course, are a part of a. They can be a single or a multi-component allergen um, that's triggering them in the home. Obviously, the pets are also uh, a way into as part of a multi-component um, allergy-specific um, uh, problem that having, and then dust mites. Ooh. Those are always bad. Those are hard. Those are tricky. I mean, come on. It's hard to even just dust your house all the time, let alone all the other stuff, especially if it's um, aggravating your child. So we're going to talk about what we can do to at least help some of those um, make some come small changes to help really make some big benefits for them. And in one of those is, um, you can move to the next one, Karen, is um, 
pillow encasements, you know, those you can get off Amazon for really not that expensive. And for the mattress, that's usually low hanging fruit that most families will do. Um, and that's a good start. Uh, educating on washing the sheets weekly in hot water. Um, hopefully most families will have at least access to a washer and dryer. Um, so that's important. And then uh, um, the stuff, toys and carpet. So some families, some of our families will um, switch out the carpet in the, in the rooms and do kind of the top three things um, pretty affordably. Um, there's a, a lot of like cheap flooring out there now. So we can kind of get that in if it's, and it really makes a difference with um, for the kids. Um, maintain the humidity. That's another big one. Um, and HEPA filtration is not really helpful. So don't even bother with that. No one cleans the filters anyway. Uh, animals year round, what you want to I try to do is, you know, obviously eliminate um, or reduce carpet, right, to help them. Um, make sure you have the pillow in casements. A HEPA vacuum is really good um, and keep the animal out of the bedroom. So as much as the docs providers talk about this till they're blue in the face, it really is hard to change that one. So as much as you can try to reinforce that as well. We hope that it happens, but at least if they're doing wrappings, getting the carpet out and at least, you know, a few things to help with that. Mold, yeah, that's always a bad one. So a variety of reasons why that's bad. So try to remain, um, you know, get that out. And then to keep the humidity low to help at least decrease the spread of that. And as we're getting a lot of the, um, immigrant population and they're in bad housing. So we're finding, you know, there's obviously mold in a lot of those places. So uh, they may not have the feet money or the landlords to change that, but at least if we can kind of do some education around that, um, it's important to try to keep some kind of safety for them. We finally move out of a bad apartment and the kids are like night and day the next time we see them. It's quite amazing. This mold's really bad. Um, allergens, right? We're coming into it right now. Someday we'll get some you know, blooms popping. So that's coming right around our way. And I know I, just in our office, pretty much 10 to 15 messages are refilling their allergy meds. So it's here, it's coming. Kids are starting to take their allergy meds and helping them, the families, educating the families on what's their trigger, where's their allergen, is it the fall, is it spring, is it both? So then they can then um, try to reduce the bedroom exposure. Like, oh, okay, it's April, even though it's a nice day, let's try not to keep our windows open. Um, just trying to encourage them, this is your season, remember Johnny? Like, you know, you know, kind of close the windows down, um, see if they can, you know, install air conditioners and keeping just AC units and keeping them kind of, away from as many allergens as possible. Um, it's tempting to have the windows down, but if it's the allergy season, it'll be beneficial for them. And then mice and cockroaches, pest control, pest management, how to help them. Um, and there's a lot of state resources out there to help support families and help them, you know, with how to help with these barriers and change and kind of make those changes for the families. And uh, you, you, the school nurses probably have a little bit you guys are more in tune with the family and their dynamic and have probably more knowledge than um, the, probably the providers about kind of what their home life is like. And you could probably be able to help address maybe some of that just because you're more aware of the family than they often always say to us here at the hospital. So those are some of the choices there for you. I think we're moving on into... Yeah. Yeah, I'll sh I'll share about just some of the Thank general you, literature in the 2020 asthma guideline updates, and then Karen, I'm going to have you go back after we talk about this, just to the other slides briefly about what the the guidelines didn't go into great detail here on what the recommendations are for allergen mitigation, but that this was part of the guideline updates was a specific topic and. There's a pretty extensive review of the literature and really what's come out of that is a lot of the studies are smaller. There's such a variety of types of exposures in the home and types of um, kids phenotypes that it's hard to know. There's not a one size fits all, but overall, when they looked at um, single and multi-component studies, what that means, like single intervention, like doing one specific thing for one allergen, did that do the job? Um, and then multi-component, when you do several things to try to address the trigger. Um, overall, generally inconclusive on whether we do just one thing or not due to lack of studies. 
But overall, just doing one thing for these allergens generally did not improve asthma outcomes um, compared to doing several things for the trigger, um, except for the pest control. So if you can get rid of mice and you're allergic to mice, that helps um, as a single intervention. But the other things need more than one thing taken care of. So if we can go back two slides, Karen, um, just to show an example of that here. Um, so dust mites, for example, um, we like to say do the dust mite cover. People like that. You know, it's one thing to do, but that alone doesn't actually take care of it. The evidence was pretty clear on that. That was a specific thing they called out there, which is a bit of a bummer. Um, and then the next slide, like Melissa talked about for the dust mite, you have to actually do a lot of things and that can be really challenging. Um, the, it's, the HEPA filtration doesn't work for this because it's not in the air. It's really important washing the sheets and the bedding and keeping the stuffed animals out or washing them, which that's really not feasible. Um, and laundry access can be, you know, hit or miss. Um, and then availability to wash weekly, that's challenging. Maybe not for all of you, but for me it is. Um, so, so thinking about doing all of these things to control a dust mite allergy is hard. Um, you notice a couple of these things, the humidity is an issue, like the molds or the dust mites. Um, this little picture of this one that says ThermoPro here, that's a hygrometer. And um, sometimes I do recommend that to families who are interested in figuring out whether the humidity is bothering or if they feel it's too dry or if I'm worried if they're using a humidifier too much. Um, the airway is happier if the humidity is somewhere in the 40 to 60 percent range, but once you're getting over that 50 percent, then the mold is very happy to be there. The dust mites are very happy, so you really do need to keep that down. Um, generally, people look for one that's kind of under the $10 range if they're going to purchase these. Sometimes there's home equipment or, you know, different things in the house that actually measure this already, but if they need to buy a separate one, it's just a cheap little mold device. Um, and that sometimes can help people check whether um, are they running the humidifier too much? It gives an extra check beyond just making sure the windows aren't blocked up because um, that definitely promotes mold if you get to that amount. But um, you also don't want the humidity sitting around, you know, like 15 or 20 percent to dry out the airway too. So, I, so sometimes that can be a helpful tool to families. Um, but overall, if you're seeing that these multi-component tools to keep triggers low, you're really doing quite a lot of things to, to help make it better. Um, animals, I think, are really challenging to ventilate the room and things like, I, I think it's sometimes it's nice to know whether they're large animals to see how much prioritizing you have to do on keeping them out of the bedroom. Because um, it really, it's not the healthiest to have your door shut all the time, but that's the only way to keep it out. So so those are some, some challenges there. So we do typically recommend that, you know, at least air filtering the HEPA vacuum and trying to keep the animal out, but that's that's pretty challenging. Um, and we can skip ahead a couple slides here. Um, I'm not gonna go into this in great detail, but this shows the, the interventions that were reviewed when they did the asthma guideline updates to decide whether, is there something we can strongly recommend to address this one trigger? Um, so they have looked at different things, addressing animal dander, dust mite cockroaches, molds, and then whether doing more than one strategy helps or does that have to be, uh, and can you just address that trigger alone? So in general, when you're looking at decreasing triggers, think of more than one strategy. So if there's a pet, you know, more than one thing. So keeping it out of the bedroom, filtering the air where the kid is most, those type of things. So more than one thing. Next slide. Um, the next piece in relationship to asthma is when you're thinking about these triggers, um, thinking about the burden and then the benefit. So how severe is the asthma? How much do we think this is bothering? Um, and is there access to, you know, if you need testing, do you have access to specialists for that? Or do you have access to allergy testing? Um, but the, the minimum really for us you know, in a clinical setting is taking a history of symptoms, trying to understand what the exposures are, and then help determining the need for, for allergen mitigation for them. And then what's, you know, the amount of effort that the family needs to do for that. 
really challenging. <laughs> So um, some of the tools that we use for home evaluation or family self-evaluation of the home, um, one would be the EPA asthma checklist, and I'll be showing you that on the next few slides. And then the other would be using our own structured questions to try to get at what the key issues are just to facilitate some dis discussion because the, the EPA checklist give some nice guidance for families who want to go through, this is actually designed for home visitors. So someone else evaluating your home, but families certainly can use this themselves. It gives some low cost options for remediation or strategies of how to address those things. Um, and in clinic, we have um, sort of an adaptation of this. It's just a short checklist that we use for, you know, to help facilitate some of our referrals for weatherization, but it has an environment checklist that matches this, but it does open up some discussion about, you know, how much smoking we think kids are exposed to about of pets, if people have seen mice lately in the home, so we can try to, you know, target some discussion about how to improve those things. Next slide. So this shows, um, can have Karen zoom in a bit on some of these slides if possible. Um, so if you use the links to this, this checklist or just search for EPA asthma checklist, um, it's pretty easy to find. And what this does is that will go through things like, um, what about the building? What type of building do you live in? What's the home interior? And some of this is learning things, but then there's some that have interventions. So if we go over um, things like smoking, um, things about um, cooking. So if you have a gas stove, um, you can use your exhaust fan. Hopefully if that vents to the outside, a lot of people don't. Um, you can also open a window. So there's some, some strategies of how to reduce some of the exposures here. Um, and then the same if we move um, through the next couple of slides, there's um, discussions about bugs, mice, um, and some suggestions about how to, to reduce those triggers. Um, same on the next one about dampness in the home, um, what you can you do about mold. This is not exhaustive, but it's a pretty, you know, thorough checklist, at least to learn about your home and learn about what things might be um, worse for respiratory health. Next slide. Um, and then when we're thinking about what isn't addressed in the updated asthma guidelines um, that weren't addressed specifically. Um, smoking, vaping, e-cigarette exposure or use, like Melissa talked about, that is still a really high priority to address. Um, that hasn't changed from the initial guidelines, but there wasn't an update about vaping specifically. But we know that these exposures, either personal exposure or around it, are pretty significant. Um, and that that's something that addressing that on an ongoing basis makes a big difference. Um, the other would be indoor air pollution that is not addressed in the updated guidelines. So I'll talk about that with you on the next slide. So talk about indoor air quality. Um, that's really important for people with asthma, also other respiratory conditions, cardiovascular disease, um, neuro, neurodevelopment. It's a pretty big deal. Um, and the major components of this um, some of those are particulate matter, um, less than 2.5 microns or PM 2.5. Um, the reason these become an issue, you can see this picture, very small. Those travel really deep in the lungs and go directly into the circulatory system. Uh, and the air quality, um, there's tons of literature out there that is closely related to respiratory health. So there's examples in the literature are PM 2.5, nitrogen dioxide. Those are common home air pollutants. Um, those are associated with lower respiratory tract infections, sinus symptoms, poorly controlled asthma and allergic symptoms. And if you decrease those things, you get better. And the indoor air is a really significant source of particulate matter exposure for children. Um, we all have experienced last summer with the outdoor air quality as particulate matter from forest fires. 
Um, but that's really a common pollutants in the house anyway. And that can be at various levels. So you do not have to be at any significant amount of level for it to be unsafe. Next slide. So the thing about the inside compared to you know being outdoors where we don't have a lot of control over that is that indoors, the air quality, you can make that better. So really this is trying to reduce combustion sources, improving ventilation, optimizing humidity in the home. So the things that are pretty common for PM production is the wood stoves. Um, so thinking about improved wood burning practices, are there alternative heating sources? Are they using a really old wood stove uh, that generates more particulate matter? So that, um, that can be a major factor. And we do see kids who have moved out of a home with a you know, older combustion source or, um, or more frequent use get better when they're not using that anymore. Um, and to see it was popular in the news this past year about gas stoves and nitrogen dioxide, this indeed is very bad for asthma. Um, it is not something everybody has the means to swap out. A lot of people don't want to. Um, but the ventilation here is really important. Um, the other thing you can do if you cannot ventilate all of it out um, would be to filter it. So HEPA filtration decreases particulate matter and it cleans the air very nicely. Um, carbon filters that are in a lot of the um, HEPA units will remove nitrogen dioxide from the air. So that's something that people can consider who really like their gas stove and they're already trying to ventilate the best they can. Um, adding HEPA filtration with a carbon filter can be helpful here. So when we think about air quality, one is trying to remove the exposure. So if you smoke, smoke outside, stop smoking. If there is a wood stove, either, you know, can you swap it out? Better burning practices, newer equipment. Um, and then separate, can you stay away from it? Um, and if you can't do those things, can you ventilate the home better? Um, and if you can't, is it something that you can filter out of the air? And there's, as far as like tobacco smoke exposure, that's not something we can readily filter out of the air. So that was something we'd really recommend removing or separating from the child. The filtering just, it will filter, have the filter will filter some of it out, but there's a lot of chemicals in there that are other than particulate matter. So that affect the lung. Next slide. And then um, weatherization is something else that helps with the health of the home. So the, these slides demonstrate a lot of things. So it's, you know, lower energy costs, better for the environment, better temperature control, um, generally better quality of life. But a lot of the things that affect asthma, it helps the air quality, reduces the pest, reduces the mold. And overall, these things are beneficial for asthma as well. And there's a, a good amount of evidence for that, as well as other health issues. Next slide. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Kelly. Should I uh, take it from here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, so um, <clears throat> in terms of triggers, um, you know, we know that kids spend, you know, a good um, eight, six to eight hours in uh, school settings, uh, smaller kids um, in care, um, daycare, uh, maybe less than that, but still the school environments become a key place where um, there's the opportunity to, um, as uh, Dr. Cowan was uh, mentioning, could um, control indoor air quality and improve um, um, the amount of triggers that kids are exposed to. Um, and one way um, to get at those school triggers um, and improve indoor air quality is by um, taking, um, conducting a walkthrough through your school using the Envision program walkthrough tool. And so to kind of just orientate you to this, I'd like to show you this video of the Envision um, uh, program. It's a five minute video of, um, with a, featuring a school nurse um, going through one. So you can see it's really doable. It's very accessible and, and easy. Um, I'm gonna pull up this slide instead and see. Um, let, me, let me just double check. I had mic microphone problems before, let me just. 
see if uh, well, we'll I'll turn up my video and see if uh, my mic and see if you can hear it. Okay, let me know, Melissa, if it's not clear early on. Was that loud enough? You can't hear anything, Karen. Okay. This my button, the button doesn't show the same as it in my new Teams. I'm not seeing how you share the um, audio. Um, sorry, hold on one minute. Let me try this one. Nothing. Hear no, you can't hear it, Karen. All right. So what I might do is stop sharing for a minute. This um, and maybe Melissa, can you pull it up? Are you able to pull this up? No idea. <laughs> Let me send you uh, the link, and I'll continue. Um, oh, I put that in the chat. I'll put this in the chat. I'm not And then uh, I'll continue on so that we can still make progress and then we can try. Um, there used to be a button where you can push and share computer audio, but it doesn't seem to have that option anymore. It's the video. I, I, I opened a link, which is the where is the video? What is it called? Oh. It's called Envision Walkthrough. You scroll down a little bit and you can see. Um, Is it the school? Yes. It Yeah. It looks like, um, let me find the, it looks like this, this one with the red, red down here at the bottom. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. And you share your screen um, or first see if it can, we can hear it. It pulling up. Are you hearing it? Not yet. Can you hear it? Not yet. I can hear it on my end. It's playing. I don't think you're sharing. Yeah, I see Karen. I don't know how to screen share. Sorry, I, I hit. I think I'll pull up the video, Melissa. How about I I mean I can open it in my thing, but I don't I don't know how to Can you hear this? Can you hear that?
Can you hear anything? No. Um, what I suggest then is let me go on and we'll uh, I can share the link. The link can um, be watched by folks and we can continue. Is that all right? Yeah, do you so, want to describe what people should look for in the link when they're watching? Yeah, um, let me let me um, share my screen again. Yeah. You... Okay, so I can quickly um, first, you know, we were really um, pleased. Uh, so what you'll see um, is when you go to that link, you'll see, um, oops, you'll see this option in the, at that link, and when you start playing it. Um, You'll you'll see um, one of the school nurses meeting um, our industrial hygiene the health department, um, Michelle Thompson, and she's working with school nurse to talk about how simple it is to go through a walkthrough, and um, they basically just it just involves um, doing some step by step. Um, Simple things um, and making small improvements, including as simple as putting in a door, not catch dust as kids come in. Most schools have these things. Um, and it includes things like what um, describing is looking for ventilation, um, uh, your ventilation systems, and making sure you're using it as a a place to store things and blocking off that ventilation. That the air can circulate and the purpose can work and um, maximum effect. Another common topic covered is things about checking your cleaning supplies and making sure they're not introducing any products or strong chemicals that could be um, uh, cause of exacerbation for kids. So, it runs through um, a variety of these main issues and how simple it is. Um, it's often recommended that um, if you're going to do a walkthrough, that you would do it in conjunction with maybe a grounds, um, a facility director, or do as much as you can as a school nurse and from your observation. And um, and then um, the exciting part about it is that it doing an Envision walkthrough gets you points towards asthma-friendly school recognition as well which we'll discuss. But the um, Envision program really does cover a lot of things that you've already been doing through um, COVID uh, preparation and, and uh, management. Um, and all of the uh, recommendations are um, easy to implement, often already in place. Um, if it's not in place, though, the walkthrough can be done online through an app or um, um, through, you can, um, print a copy of the, the, the walkthrough list of best practices. And if um, if you use the app, what's exciting about that is when you say, whoops, no, we don't have a doormat. <laughs> it says, up comes a recommendation, says a best practice is to use door doormats so that you can collect dust. And it gives you the reason, gives you the solution, and um, it makes it very, um, easy to then print that out and it becomes a, a, a plan for your school team to work on over the next year. It's not um, it's not meant as any kind of uh, policing or any kind of enforcement like it's it's more just a simple set of um, a list of, of you know items that are simple to do and that your team can work on in the future. But the results are improved indoor air quality that can help support your asthma students and support the health of all your um, staff and students. Um, the I mentioned the Asthma Friendly Schools um, program, and um, this is where um, we we work together with our partners and, and with you as school nurses to come up with best practice solutions 
Um, a lot of them we've we've uh, identified by talking with some of you, as well as um, Caitlin Kozis, who's the um, state school nurse consultant with the health department. Um, and um, we've identified best practices that you're already required to do. Um, and then some additional ones that are really particularly good for um, helping uh, improve air quality or uh, reducing asthma exasperation. So a lot of the um, the best practice items include things that are already established in state law. And those include, um, you know, putting ensuring that you're enforcing bans on the use of tobacco products and substitutes on school grounds or, you know, having some kind of signage for no vehicle idling or that you have some sort of plan and practice in place with your um, administration or grounds um, team facilitator. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of schools call them different things, but um, facility directors or uh, grounds directors or a custodial staff that have a plan to purchase uh, certified safe and green cleaning supplies. Um, the other category is that you just, uh, there are just best practice things related to asthma. For example, you have asthma action plans on file for students with asthma, or you promote annual well child exams. Um, and um, even though your staff might purchase safe green um, um, cleaning supplies, you often have best intentioned parents and staff bringing in their own cleaning supplies that may not be. So best practice is to actually prevent, um, have a have a policy that says, no, don't bring in those supplies. Let's rely only on our, our purchasing policy uh, to, to supply our classrooms. And that's hard because you're all dealing with short budgets and, and we understand that, but this can help um, eliminate unintentional um, asthma, asthma gins being brought into schools. Another category is that um, is a really higher order set of things, but you do it all the time is to establish plans or policies or carry out school improvements overall. For example, a lot of your schools have improved their HVAC systems or have um, installed purifiers, air purifiers, or do a regular maintenance on those systems. And, and that is a best practice. It improves ventilation, the quality of ventilation, and it certainly translates into better air quality. Um, or maybe some of your schools um, have established a fragrance-free policy to make sure that no asthma flare-ups occur. Um, and um, in this case, this session um, and this provider network serves as a training of staff. Um, and so you can earn points towards nominating your school as asthma friendly just for participating in this session, in these classes um, or sessions. And then also if you, in your school, deliver training to all staff, a lot of you do on asthma basics or how to manage an emergency, asthma related emergency. So I don't know if some of you um, have ever visited the asthma friendly schools nomination form. I thought um, if, I think we have enough time, Kelly. Shall I just go ahead and show where it's found? Yeah, how's that sound for everyone? Yeah, so if you go to your browser and you um, type up um, Vermont um, Department of Health, then you would you know, go to the main site. And then here you would head, hit the menu um, and we are within the health promotion and chronic disease prevention. The Envision walkthrough is here under health and the environment, so you can find it there. Um, the asthma program is here, and you can find the Envision link to um, as there as well. Here's the list of all the chronic conditions within um, this uh, health promotion and chronic disease prevention division, and asthma and lung disease is, is, is included there. And you'll find a variety of resources and supportive information for you, um, including just the asthma basics and things about asthma self-management education. But here's a whole page on asthma-friendly schools. And um, you can find out about some of the, um, why the program exists, um, you know, why it's important for schools to actually become an asthma-friendly school, and then how you might become 
one. And the way you become an asthma friendly school is before May 31st, which is coming up, is you can complete a nomination form using this link down below. And um, you basically just complete, um, sorry, my dog is gonna bark, bark right now. Um, and you can uh, basically, hold on one second while I get her, <laughs> just one. Always the perfect timing. Um, and so you use this uh, form to fill out items that you have in place. And like I said before, many of those items are already in place. A lot of those laws you are enacting in your school, so earn points for them. <laughs> or many of those improvements have been made through COVID, so earn points for them. Um, you're taking, you're participating in this session, earn points for that. So once you do, you just go through to this online forum um, and you just click yes, no, I don't know. Uh, those are options and some information about which school you're from. And then you you basically accumulate points for, for your schools. If you do um, receive bronze, silver, or gold um, level status, then you can become a recognized school to be featured on our interactive map. And then they're also listed down here below with other additional materials. Um, as I said earlier, the, the link to the Envision program is also found here, making it quite easy for you. Um, and so um, there are some higher order things, some bigger ticket items that we want to um, uh, promote for this year. Um, one is to complete the Envision walkthrough. It takes about an hour to do if you're working with a, crown, a grounds um, director. Um, you know, together you two could finish it pretty quickly because uh, there's some elements that seem a little bit like, do you know about the HVAC filter maintenance program? You might not know, but the grounds person would know right away. So just having a conversation with them or you can fill out the nomination form um, for the school and do the items you know, and then have your grounds facilitator person um, do it, d nominate the school and identify the things they know about. So you can have multiple nominations for your school and get the, the total number of points. Um, and um, then the other priority is if you would deliver to, to a student with uncontrolled asthma, um, the asthma self-management education. And that basically is to use that Ask Me in Schools packet that I've sent out to many of you. If you haven't received it, put in the chat that you want to receive one. It outlines how to deliver uh, these four content um, elements that we've been covering in these sessions. You do it with the students as well, but you also kind of look at their skills like, um, and you check their asthma control. Um, and you can get points for actually completing that with one student uh, before May 31st um, and, and getting the, their completed little form saying you've completed this content, this content um, and check their inhaler um, technique. Um, and lastly, a big ticket item would be to try to strive to get um, at least 75% of your students with up to date asthma action plans on file. So this is a. Uh, a list of various best practices. Um, you know, it takes four to get bronze level, only four best practices. Many schools have about seven and um, 11 for silver and about 50% of the criteria gets gold. Um, and then um, here's here's a quiz. I've got a pop quiz for some of you. I don't know, there's not, some of you may be seeing students, so. But these are examples of some of the materials we, we try to find and make available. Um, Kim, this is one that might be something you might like, and, you know, for small kids is, um, can you find some of the triggers? Um, and um, can anybody see the dust mite? <laughs> Down here, is there other triggers anybody wants to shout out and say they can see? I see the um, pile of stuffed animals on the bed. Yeah. Any others? The adorable kitty in the bedroom. Yeah, kitty in the bedroom. 
anything else that might be a trigger for um, a child with asthma in this um, room? I see the carpet. What about the outdoor triggers? And we see uh, a little bit of like air quality, outdoor air quality problems up there with smog, a little bit of the leaves falling. So maybe some issue with dust and um, you know allergies. Um, so anyway, these are just example of what kind of materials that we might um, be able to you know help you find if you have specific needs. Um, and um, we we're trying to build a page that's specific to school nurses so that. Um, you'd be able to have them um, on our page at your fingertips, but that's more to come. <laughs> uh, in the meantime, we also, we have brochure, this brochure on um, triggers, and it's very similar to what um, Dr. Cowan was showing earlier, where it has a particular trigger. And then if you have to map go smoke, what would be some kind of steps um, to take? With regards to um, tobacco, we know, that Vermont is in the top five um, for asthma, and we're also amongst the highest um, uh, with uh, people who have asthma who also use tobacco or vaping products. So um, that includes mostly adults, but we know that more and more teens um, and, and ages quite young are beginning to use vaping products in particular, but also um, other kinds of tobacco products. And so we will um, try to provide information about the dangers of that and then also um, uh, provide um, referral um, uh, or other information about 802 quits um, to help you know, family members or um, the individuals themselves stopping um, use of those. Um, but there's other other kinds of uh, recommendations that are available on this kind of material. And as I was saying before, um, we have materials for uh, cessation efforts um, and information about uh, the risks of um, uh, tobacco products and substitutes. And again, um, the asthma friendly schools and the Envision program are tools that you can use to improve or enhance conditions in your school. And um, I hope you will take the time to watch that little video. It's about five minutes and it's it's very well done. And it introduces you, you to Michelle Thompson, who can also be available to um, set up an appointment to walk you through or visit your school and help you with a walkthrough. Um, and um, so take the time to to watch that. At this, uh, Dr. Callan um, or Melissa, is there anything else you want to cover or shall we open it to questions? I do have questions. Let's uh, take some questions. Uh, Kelly, uh, Dr. Callan, I'll let you lead that while I just take care of my dog. Does anyone have questions? I'm checking the chat. Also, I don't see questions in the chat either, but happy to take questions now or feel free to reach out by email as well. Um, if there are any questions, we can wrap up a couple minutes early and give you a few minutes if you want to watch that video or get back to your students. Yeah, I was disappointed that that sound, I haven't. Uh been able to solve that problem. I'll I'll try to do it this by this next last session that we do um, and be able to trail at least one video. Not sure why that's not coming through, but um, yeah, I think the um, I want to recommend finishing on uh, nominating your school before May 31st. If you have any problems with that, please uh, reach out to me and um, I can um, walk through it with you. Um, and, you know, we can calendar that in or 
as I said, Michelle can be available to help you with an Envision walkthrough. Um, also, put in the chat if you need the um, higher order thing with the Ask Me in Schools packet to deliver Ask Me to one student with uncontrolled asthma. And um, we can help you find um, that uh, EPA guideline or other checklists to help with home settings if you've got a kid who really could use a conversation with parents about identifying some additional things like, you know, at least have the pet outside the bedroom um, <laughs> um, and or using those additional, um, you know, pillow coverings and, and things. But like uh, Dr. Cowan was mentioning, a multi-component, a multiple, multiple strategies um, to get at something is key. So, um, no questions coming in, so I see. Well, I want to thank Dr. Um, uh, uh, Melissa Barron for starting us off today and um, Dr. Cowan for the details about the um, guidelines and additional information about triggers. And we look forward to seeing everybody for the, the fourth session of this round um, next week at the same time. Have a great week, Thanks, everybody. Everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Melissa. <laughs> yeah.